Hello Wales, I hope you've had a lovely bank holiday weekend um, and I hope you um, aren't too disappointed that yesterday I didn't record uh, a new book. I uh, completely forgot to pick one up after school yesterday but you will get two instalments today instead. Our new book that we're going to read is called Otterline at Sea and it's by Chris Riddle. And there are lots of lovely pictures in this one as well which you'll get to see. Chapter 1 Otterline lived on the 24th floor on the Pepperpot building. It was on the 3rd street, which had Gruberman's Korean theatre on at one end and Pettigrew Park and ornamental gardens at the other. In the middle was the 3rd street shoe store. Yeah, you can see it. Remember, you can always pause the pictures if I rush them. Otterline lived in apartment 243 with Mr Munro, who was small and hairy and didn't like the rain or having his hair brushed. I'm going to read through this bit here. There he is, by the way. So it says, this is Otterline's notebook, where she jots down things she sees and works out clever plans. Just read this bit here. Otterline is a mistress of disguise and has a diploma from the Who Are You Academy of Subterfuge. And this last little bit for Mr Munro. Mr Munro met Otterline's parents in a bog in Norway and came to live with them in the big city. Otterline and Mr Munro were good at solving tricky problems and working out clever plans, which they did quite a lot. Like the time they caught the notorious jewel thief, jewel thief the yellow cat. And there is a picture of them. And it says, you can read about it in Otterline and the yellow cat. You can read about the ghost in Otterline goes to school. Ooh, ghost. And the time she came face to face with the ghost of the horse and the Hammersteins. But, Otter, but whatever Otterline and Mr Munro did, they did it together. And there they are. Just the other page, we'll read through these. Otterline's parents were roving collectors who travelled the world for collecting things. They were away a lot, but made sure Otterline was well looked after and kept in touch with postcards, which Otterline kept in her postcard collection. Mr Munro collected odd bits of string, which he added to the ball of string in his bedroom. Otterline collected odd shoes. Whenever she bought a pair, she would wear one and put the other in her odd shoe collection. One morning at the beginning of, school, of the school holidays, looks like they're up to something. Definitely Mr Munro was up to something there. That afternoon, Otterline and Mr Munro were walking down 3rd Street when a large billboard caught Mr Munro's eye. He stopped and pointed. Not now, Mr Munro said Otterline, absent-mindedly. When we go on holiday, I'm going to read, I'm going to need some shoes. Probably not reading shoes. Bonjour, Otterline, said Vivian of the Third Street shoe store. I see you've spotted the penguin slippers. I also have your size in the Eskimo pumps, the caribou platforms, and a pair of quite unusual moose boots. I'll take them all, said Otterline. You can't have too many shoes on holiday. Could you tie them in a parcel with lots of string, please? And there's the picture of the various different shoes. That evening, Otterline and Mr Munro sat down to dinner. Otterline had macaroni cheese and lime juice cordial, freshly delivered to the table by the home cooked meal company. Mr. Munro had a bowl of porridge and a mug of hot chocolate, which 
is what he always had. And they all sat at their table. Mr. Munro was just about to sip his hot chocolate when he noticed something rather unusual. He rushed down to Otterline's end of the table. Don't make a mess, Mr. Munro, said Otterline distractedly. She was busy rereading her favourite book, The Whistle of the Wind, Tales of the Animal of Animal Hitchhiking by Thor Thorinson, to get some ideas for where to go on holiday. She had just got to the bit about being polite to llamas. The following morning, Max the paperboy delivered the big city inquirer to apartment 243. Otterline was reading the postcard that she'd, she'd just found on the welcome mat. Going somewhere nice for your holidays? he asked. I haven't decided, said Otterline. She began flicking through the newspaper. Yet. There's the postcard. And I'll read it through. Dearest O, Pa and I are, tr are troll spotting and Pa thought he'd found the footprints of quite Bigfoot, but they turned out to belong to a dancing elk. Lots of love, Ma. P.S. You and Mr. Munro should have a holiday. We're sending a parcel. Ooh. For the rest of the day, Mr. Munro kept seeing strange and unusual things. I'll read through what they are, but you can have a look first. McBean's cleaning service. Smith and Smith pillow plumping and curtain drawing technicians. Marion's Bathroom Supplies, The Smiling Dragon Folding Clothes Company, Happy Nest Bed Makers, Door Handle Shiners Incorporated, 1000 Strong Light Bulb Changing Company. Nobody else did. They were all too busy. Mr. Munro felt sad, but Otline didn't notice. Too, easy, re too busy reading her book. And that is the end of that chapter. So I will record another one for today. Um, there's chapter two for today. Um, I'll do that in a bit. So I'll upload this one first. All right. Have a lovely day. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye.